Wow. Okay. Lawlers, welcome back to another beginner champion guide. We're going to be covering off Fizz, the playful trickster today. Um, really fun ability powered assassin mid laner. So if you like one shotting people, but you also like playing super tricky and pissing off the enemy champions as well, this is a really good champion for you. So in today's guide, we're going to cover off his runes, the items and build that you're going to want to rush with Fizz, and then also his abilities, combos, and a sample lane phase. So you guys understand how to play the early game well and look for some good opportunities to trade aggressively and get some kills and snowball because any assassin does need some of that gold income coming in from kills to really get to a point in the mid game where you can take over and have a huge impact and just snowball the game out of control okay so we're going to try and breeze through the first part of this guide in terms of the runes and the build and really just get to talking about Fizz's E, which is a uh, playful trickster. And that's his whole identity. That's where we're going to spend the most time talking about um, in terms of the guide. So let's breeze through the first part of this. It's pretty simple. Honestly, you can follow this setup in pretty much every single game. So we don't have to spend a lot of time talking about it. Just copy these runes here. Electrocute, Cheap Shot. Zombie Ward, Ultimate Hunter, Triumph, and Coupe de Gras. This could change patch to patch, but again, honestly, as long as you're running Electrocute, you're pretty much good to go with Fizz, okay? It's going to give you that extra burst damage that you want that is an Assassin, all right? In terms of the items here, starting items with lane phase as a beginner, you're always going to run the Corrupting Potion. It gives you good sustain in lane. There's no sustain within Fizz's kit, and as a melee range Assassin, you're probably going to take a lot of poke from the mid lane champions you're going to be facing off against. So you want the Corrupting Potion to survive the early lane phase and also let you do some trades and come back out of them net positive, okay? Stealth Ward's a great option, obviously, early on to pick up. You can trench it. You can transition into an Oracle lens later in the game so that you can also start to gank side lanes and clear out vision as an assassin. That's always important to make sure people don't see you when you're coming in from different angles so you can try and get some good plays on squishier and normally backline champions. Okay, now the rush items that you're going to always rush in every single game for your core build is Fizz. The first mythic is going to be Ludin's Tempest. It has everything you need as Fizz that you want to be bursting people out and also have ability haste so you can spam your E a little bit more as the game goes. So you're going to rush Ludin's Tempest. The first major component within Ludin's Tempest here, Lost Chapter, this is the item that you want to rush with your first back. So once you get 1300 gold and you can press B in a good lane state and come back and buy Lost Chapter, you want to do that. Lost Chapter is a really good spike for Fizz in terms of ability haste, mana, and ability power that lets you start spamming your E a little bit more in the lane, which makes you more powerful. The more times you can cast E and the more damage your E does as Fizz, the more powerful you become okay so you want to rush lost chapter and then of course once you get enough gold buy the full Ludens tempest after Ludens tempest you're going to rush the ionian boots of lucidity this gives you ability haste again allowing you to spam your e more often and then also summoner spell haste as well because in our summoner spells we're running flash ignite every single game this is your setup as an assassin with your summoner spells close your Close distances with Flash, get more damage with Ignite, okay? So we're rushing the Ionian Boots of Lucidity. And then the third core item here in our rush is going to be Zhonya's Hourglass. Even if you're not playing against an attack damage champion, you don't even care. The, uh, the active from Stasis is just too good on Fizz. You get ability power and you get ability haste again. Um, with the active Stasis where you become untargetable for 2.5 seconds, and then with the untargetable off your E for 0.75 seconds, you're essentially untargetable for over three seconds consecutively. So really, really good and just makes Fizz even slippier. So you're going to rush this in every single game. Okay, that's your core right there. If you can get these three items by 20 minutes, you're going to have a really fun time in the game. You're going to be one shotting a lot of enemy champions, even if they're not super squishy. Okay, so really try and concentrate on getting gold by 20 minutes, either from kills or minion score, to make sure you can get to these three items. If you're not getting anywhere close to these three items in your games by 20 minutes, Fizz is going to feel really lackluster, like he does no damage. So if you're having problems playing him and you can't one shot anyone, try and check to see where your gold income is lacking if you're not getting enough kills or you're not getting enough minion score by 20 minutes 20 minutes to get these three core items okay and that's it that's it for runes and build and items so let's jump into the lane and the river now and talk about physics abilities
All right, so before we get into any of his abilities here, let's talk about his passive. It's not the greatest passive in the game by any means. It really is just a helpful passive for early lane phase trading. It lets you ghost, which means you can walk directly through minions. You don't have to path around them, either when you're walking towards an enemy champion to trade onto them or disengaging and walking away from them trying to drop minion aggro. You can walk directly through minions, okay? Again, not great, especially once lane phase ends, but it does allow you some extra slipperiness in the early game trades. The other aspect of this is you take reduced damage from all sources. You can see right now with my current build, it's six. The scales off of ability power, but the scaling is really, really bad. It's only 1%, so this will never get to a point where you're taking like 50 reduced damage. Again, it's just meant that if you're trading in an entire enemy minion wave onto a champion, when these minions choose to attack, you you're going to take six or in this case six reduced damage from each of those incoming attacks so it makes the minions hitting you a little bit less hostile okay that's pretty much it for the passive again after lane phase ends it's going to be almost a non-factor so let's now talk about and spend the most time about fizz's e this is going to be the ability you pick up first and you max out out of your basic abilities every single game and this is what makes fizz fizz so there's a lot we could talk about with this ability. I'm going to try and do my best to keep this short, but also informative so that you can go from a beginner using E to somewhat of an advanced usage in E the more games you play with Fizz. Okay, so let's just high level talk about the ability here. It has two separate parts. The first part, you jump up onto your trident and dodge out any incoming damage, spells, abilities, whatever you want to call it. You basically remove yourself from the game. Okay, now... The second part, you come back down from that trident and you deal damage and slow people within that radius that you can kind of see that blue line. Okay, so this ability is amazing because it gives you some some counterplay to incoming damage or abilities. You can dodge it all, and then it also gives you some aggressiveness and damage that when you come back down off that trident, you can deal some damage. So let's just put an enemy. Um, dummy here and just show you guys that so if this dummy was casting for example i don't know like some type of a targeted ability or even um a skill shot you can just press e dodge it and then when you come back down you deal a good chunk of damage and slow them okay so amazing ability you can honestly out trade almost any champion level one in the game if you use your e well and you time it up that they're throwing something at you an ability a targeted or or a skill shot you dodge it and then you come back down and deal a good chunk of damage okay the comeback down and the jumping up, you can use some tricks here to cover some distance so that you don't have to be standing right next to the champion when you press E or come back down off it to deal that damage in that radius, okay? So the first thing I want to tell you guys is when you press E, and you should always be using quick cast with Fizz when you're playing him, the direction that your mouse is pointing to in the minimap, or sorry, not in the minimap, in the game field here, is where Fizz will kind of jump up onto his trident. So if I just have it hovering directly over fizz i jump straight up onto my trident if i have it kind of up to the left here you can see i jump up to the left if i have it down to the right he jumps down to the right okay so this is really cool because if we're kind of far away from a champion and we won't reach the circle and the damage from here we actually want to have the cursor pointing towards that champion to deal the damage okay you can also use this to jump over walls on the first part of your e as well all right. Now, the next big thing we have to talk about with Fizz's E is if you use the recast part of it. So if I just simply press E once on my keyboard and you'll hear the click here, hopefully. And I don't press it again. After 0.75 seconds, Fizz comes back down and hops off his trident on his own and deals damage in the wider circle that you can see here and slows enemy champions. If, however, I press E a second time after the first cast, so the recast of it, I will come back down off the trident faster so I can reduce the total cast time of this ability. Then the negative part of the coming back down faster, though, is I only deal damage in the smaller blue circle now and I deal less uh, or I don't deal any slow. Okay, same amount of damage, just no slow. So first one here with one cast, you can see the large blue circle stays on the screen and I deal damage in slow. If I press it again, second cast, smaller blue circle, no slow. And I might even miss the damage now because of that larger circle gets reduced down to the small circle that you can see here. Okay, so two ways of looking at this. 
first single use cast only gives you a really good width of damage and slows, but it's a little bit slower to use, which means that if you wanted to close the gap on an enemy champion or run away really quickly, you know, you have to just use a second cast yourself. Okay. The second version, obviously the recast that we're talking about here, you get that speed so you can close the distance onto someone or run away a little bit faster. You just have to be careful. You don't miss the damage now because that circle becomes a little bit smaller. All right. The second cast, when you come back down from your trident, can be used to jump over walls. So if I have my cursor hovering here and I press E and then I recast again, I can jump back over a wall or if I could jump over two walls. Right. There is a lot of different walls in the game you can and can't jump over based on their width. So I would experiment in a practice tool what you can jump over as fizz and what you cannot. OK so that you can learn to be really, really tricky with your pathing and either catch up to people or run away from them in some really creative ways and, and dodge damage or get damage onto people. Okay. Now it is possible, even if you don't use the recast of your E to get a little bit of an extra distance gap closure on an enemy champion. Just make sure that after that initial cast where your cursor is pointing, you actually right click your cursor in the direction you want to come back down. You don't have to press E again. You just press E once in the direction you want to jump and then right click on the direction you want to come back down and let Fizz come back down on his own. Do not press E again. OK, the recast is only meaning you press E twice. Press E once and right click in the direction you want to go down. Fizz will come back down and still have that wide area of damage. Okay. If you guys have comments about the E, let me know in the, in the comment section below. But um, I could talk for hours about this ability and all the different uses. For now, I think that's pretty good as a beginner. So let's talk about the other abilities here that Fizz has at his disposal. The second one is his W here, Sea Stone Trident. Uh, passively, Fizz's attacks causes enemies to bleed and also deal more magic damage over time. So if I press W here, you can see my trident starts to glow. It's going to deal damage, extra damage on my auto attacks and also bleed people over three seconds. Really, really powerful ability for the auto attacks. Um, it has a cool active here where if it kills a unit, so you're using it to farm a minion, for example, under turret, it actually reduces the mana on um, a kill and then it gives a shortened cooldown so you can spam it a little bit more on minions, for example. Okay. The best way to use this in terms of trading onto an enemy champion is understanding that it acts as an auto attack reset which means if you auto attack someone press W right away you get another quick auto attack that's also empowered by your W so this gives you a really good short trade potential especially if you pair that up with the bleed damage you can see even an auto attack here with one enhanced W following it up and that bleed damage deals a really good chunk of damage right with these core items over 700 damage so you know, even using no other abilities, just an auto and then W to get another quick auto that's enhanced out deals really good damage. Okay, third basic ability here, Urchin Strike, Fizz dashes through an enemy, deals some physical damage and magic damage. This is actually the ability you max out last out of your basic ability. So you max E, then W, and then Q, and then obviously a point in R whenever you can. The dash is actually quite good range. You can see that blue circle there. It's pretty good, okay? The thing to remember with the dash is it's actually a fixed range dash, which means that if you cast it at its full max range, Fizz will end up right at the target. But if you're standing close to the target already and then you dash it's going to fix range dash all the way past that target right it always wants to dash that much in terms of range so some cool interactions i'll just note here with the fixed range dash if an enemy is against a wall and you try and dash even from close range the wall will stop that dash once you hit them so if you go through the champion after that if there's a wall or terrain you won't be able to go through it but if there was vision and you had vision of an enemy champion behind a wall, the dash actually goes through the wall and brings you to the champion. Okay, so another really cool way to close the distance and get onto an enemy champion, you can queue through walls if you have vision of them. And again, the queue range is no joke. It's like really far. Like I'm standing just on these lily pads here and I can dash to this champion behind a wall. So again, really good playmaking ability uh, within Fizz's kit. Now, the, the essential combo you want as Fizz in the lane phase is you're going to queue onto an enemy champion, auto attack them, and then press W to get another quick auto 
attack out that's enhanced with more damage and bleed damage that's your combo that's it so in lane phases fizz all you're looking to do is fish with q auto w okay q auto w and then you walk out okay now if you don't want to walk out because you're going to take too much damage or they're going to trade back onto you once you q auto w you e away okay so q right so q auto w and then you e away to kind of again get a free trade for all intensive purposes because when you jump up on your e you take no damage you remove yourself from the game nothing can target you you're gone okay if you want to play really really aggressive and go for kills because you've chunked this champion out maybe they're half health instead of eating away you'll continue the e and try and damage them with it with that larger circle radius so i q auto w jump up and then depending on which way they try and run i would use my cursor and right click on both parts of the up and down of the trident jump to stay on them and deal more damage okay so again that full kind of pre-level six kill combo will look like q auto w and then e with that full range damage and slow and then you just keep following up with those and empowered autos and that's fizz pre-level six okay really really simple again you can tell most of this explanation was all about using his e properly okay but the basic pre-level six all in combo q auto w e deals you know even with no alt here huge chunks of damage once you get your core build and even before this you know still really good damage now when you pick up your r all this does is it adds more damage to the combo you send out this skill shot shark essentially that has three different levels the further away you land the shark the more damage it's going to deal there's some extra verbiage here but as a beginner all you really care about is the further you hit the shark the more damage it's going to deal so in this first radius here you can see if i cast a shark in the smallest circle here it's going to deal the smallest amount of damage so 280 okay if i cast it within the second circle here it's going to deal more damage now they did 388 if i cast it in the longest circle possible it's going to deal the most damage at 496 so if you're trying to one shot someone just know the best way to one shot them is to land the shark from the farthest range possible it is a skill shot which means you can miss it so the trade-off again here with fizz is the farther away you try and throw this shark the more chances you are of missing it okay so there is a little bit of a balancing act there depending on how squishy the enemy target is how much damage you're dealing with your items uh, how far away you'd want to try and cast that shark to maximize your damage in terms of the hitbox itself it's actually pretty forgiving i'd say there's been patches where it's less forgiving and more forgiving but right now i'd say even if you're a little bit left or right of the target you can see this little fish attaches to them and calls the big shark out if you miss the target really wide that fish will just kind of stay where it is and bring the shark up anyway which still deals damage if people walk onto it and kind of displaces them a little bit okay but a little bit left or right is pretty much still good you'll attach the the fish the chum and then the shark comes out okay um in terms of one other trick to remember here with the cast range because this is a skill shot depending on where your cursor is when you press r that's where the fish is going to go okay it's a skill shot you're going to cast out that chum wherever your cursor is if it lands on a champion great if it doesn't the shark's only going to come up where you throw the chum out so you want to try and make sure if you're going for a full range cast on an enemy champion i would just give you guys the tip as beginners put your cursor behind the champion when you press r to ensure it's going to go at least to the champion and hit them even if you're close range do not just press r on them because if they flash backwards or use a dash in their kit or even just walk backwards you might miss it so i'd always put the cursor behind the enemy champion and then press r on the way the chum will grab them and stop and you'll call the shark up you just never want to miss it short like this and look like basically an idiot from not casting your ult the full distance okay so how you tie this into a full combo with fizz obviously you want to try and land the shark at full range which is further than your e or your q range so you're gonna have to land it from here you start walking towards them and then you just do your normal normal combo of queuing auto wing and then following up with the e 
if for whatever reason you want to be a little bit more advanced and dodge out some type of an immobilizing ability coming your way after you land the shark, you could actually use your E to close the distance first and then start your auto W combo. And then depending on if they flash away or dash, you could follow them with the Q. Okay. So realistically, when you look at Fizz's kit, you have R is damage. You have W as damage, and then you have two gap closers um, with E and Q in terms of your full combo, and it's up to you to decide which gap closer you want to use. So the two versions of this are R, Q first, auto, W, E, and then the second version is you actually use the E instead to close that distance, so you E, and then auto, W, Q out, okay? So guys, that's pretty much it for the all-in combos as Fizz. Um, let's talk about now the laning phase. We're going to jump into a sample laning phase and get you guys kind of on the same page with a uh, proper way to lane with Fizz early on from levels 1 to 3 and then from levels 3 to 6 and onwards. Okay, so I'll catch you guys in a second. So we're in lane. We've got our starting corrupting potion here. We're going to pick up our E first. Let's talk about the general strategy in lane phase here with Fizz. Level 1, because you can dodge damage and deal damage, you're likely stronger than the enemy champion level 1. Okay, The way you want to try and use your ability, E, right off the start, is get into the minion wave. Go for your last hits. I wouldn't push the wave by auto-attacking non-stop and pushing the wave close to the enemy tower. I just play chill, but as soon as the enemy champion throws an ability out at you, you want to counter that by jumping up on your E to dodge it and hopefully landing on them to deal damage. If that situation never happens, you can just auto attack and last hit the minions as normal. And then we're really just looking to get to level three here, <clears throat> past level one if we don't land that trade, that little mini trade with our E, okay? So I'm gonna beat, I'm not gonna push the wave, but as soon as this Ziggs uses an ability, we're gonna try and jump up on our staff and then just deal some damage till we proc that electrocute and then we're going to run away and try and drop the minion aggro okay that's our level one trade you can do that into a lot of different matchups and hopefully get a winning trade out but because minion or because enemy champions mid lane you're going to face are usually ranged with their autos and their spells if your e's not up play very carefully don't jump into them too much so you can see here even me without playing fizz you know every day my reactions on that e are a little bit slow um so i did take some damage from him before we got up on the stack but picking up w second we use this to make sure that we secure last hits as they come into our tower it gives you a little bit of extra damage and gets you some last hits now if this zigs gets too crazy on us we want to try and use that E to dodge the damage again. You can see it's a little bit tricky depending on where you land. You might not always get that damage out. And already with a couple of bad trades, we've already taken a lot of damage and we've lost a lot of mana from using our, our mana hungry E. So this is why you use Corrupting Potion at the start. Okay, so try and use your W to last hit effectively and survive to level three. Try not to take as much damage as we did early on in this lane phase. I was just trying to show you guys the usage of the E. But now that we have level three, the trade is to Q onto them, auto W, and then E out or keep the trade going with E. So I'm gonna use one more corrupting potion. We're gonna make sure we get this cannon minion, and then we're gonna try and trade onto the Ziggs, right? Auto W, and then we just walk out if we want to, okay? So we can follow up on an E the next time. I would use, I would suggest following up with E when the champion is below 50% health. So queuing onto them, auto, W, E, and then you can use Ignite also to close out and get the, and get the kill. So you can see level one, depending on how good your reaction is, you can win some mini trades, but then level kind of three is when you really start to become dangerous as Fizz and you might be able to get some kills early on. So level three is really that, that kill threshold that you're looking for. Now, post level three, it's just gonna be the exact same trading combo that I was just showing you guys. We're gonna try and Q auto W when he's back in lane as stuff as soon as it stops lagging um, and then we're going to try and back once we have enough gold for our lost chapter which is 1300 so i'm hanging out here right fizz is going to throw an ability we're going to try and dodge it q auto w and then i'm going to use my e now to actually disengage because he put down his little bombs and i didn't want to take damage from those bombs Okay, I'm almost at 1300 gold, so I'm really going to try and concentrate on getting these last hits right now, get enough mana to get my lost chapter when I go back to base. Okay, so I'm going to shove my, my wave in here with W, 
hopefully get enough uh, gold really quickly here. We're almost there. We're going to hang out a little bit longer here. It's not going to be the cleanest back, but we're going to get a little bit more gold here and push this wave in. And then when we're at 1300, we're going to go back and get that uh, lost chapter. So almost dead here. We're going to have to play a little bit carefully here. We're at 1300 plus the recall time. So we're just going to go back now. Um, and recall here and come back to lane phase and this is your next major power spike is fizz you know you get a kill or you don't get a kill you get the 1300 gold you go back and you buy your lost chapter once you get this lost chapter it's a big big component towards your ludens so we're going to pick this up you're not running teleport when you're playing fizz so you if you want you can use your e to get back to lane a little bit faster just kind of casting out of the base there and then we're looking to come back to lane phase and again super simple trading pattern q auto w and then either use the e to get out or follow up okay so once we get back to lane phase q auto w and then probably use the e to follow up with him and get the kill okay you can use your w on the minions here just to secure some last hits under tower but if this guy gets close enough, we won't use the R yet. You want to Q, Auto, W, and then E to finish him off. Okay, so you can see the distance that we covered there and the distance that we can keep covering with our E to get kills is actually really good, really solid. So a lot of gap closing ability within Fizz's kit. If you do happen to kill an enemy champion in lane phase and you have your R like we have right now, I'd highly recommend him trying to use your E on the entire minion wave at its full cast duration, push the wave so that you can roam with your R. Okay, so here's a great example. We push the wave with our E, we're gonna roam towards the bottom with our R and try and get a kill on another lane if we if we can, um, especially while our enemy mid laner is down. So here we're gonna try and land the R at max range on this Kale. You wanna try and wait to see if her movements are looking like they're gonna be a little bit sporadic. Check your range, land your R, Okay, cast was a little bit weird there. We're just going to follow her up with autos here. Q, auto, W. And then we're going to just keep trading with her. We don't have to use our E yet. We're still within range. Now I'm going to dodge out her ability, land on her, and deal more damage. Okay, so to maximize the use of your E, even if you happen to miss an R because the hitbox messes up or you happen to mess up and miss it's still really key that you remain calm use your q and e to gap close when necessary and just make sure you keep autoing them with your empowered w autos and then your e to dodge out an incoming ability and deal damage okay try and maximize your e by using it to dodge an incoming ability so q auto w dodge that ability come down with the full damage and then just keep damaging him here. I'll use Ignite here just to make sure we get the kill. And then you get another kill. Now, this is when Fizz becomes super dangerous if you're slightly ahead. Because your trading combo is so straightforward and so, so easy to execute. It's really hard for you to miss your damages, Fizz. Which means that if you're ahead, the damage will always come out and be really, really oppressive. So, we could take a quick back here. We have another 1500 gold. We used our E to shove that wave at the tower. So, we go back, we buy another major component towards the Ludens Tempest, and we pick up a pair of boots. Okay? And now you're just on repeat. This is how you snowball as Fizz. You just keep killing your enemy mid laner. If you don't have to use your R to kill them, you save your R to go to another lane and, and get a kill on another lane. Okay, generally you want to go towards the bot lane because there'll always be an ADC down there who's fairly squishy and you can use your R to one shot um, them at range. Okay, Your E, just like we talked about, you basically remove yourself from the map, which means you don't even take tower aggro. So diving is really easy with Fizz if you use your E. Okay, Now, full range shark combo again, if we can land it, wait for the enemy champion to be lining up an auto attack or something or kind of about to cast an ability. We're just waiting to see like that. So there and then we auto Q. We didn't even have to use, sorry, auto W. We didn't even have to use our Q yet because he's not even running away. We don't even have to close the gap. All right, and then we get the kill. Okay, so we killed him with R there, but let's still try and go to another lane and kill somebody else. I'll show you guys maybe a gank even if you don't have R here. So at this point in the game, you'd want to transition ideally once you start roaming a lot to the... Uh, to the scanning ward and take out enemy vision but even if you don't have your r remember you have two gap closers in q and e so right now we're just going to walk up to this champion don't use your gap closers preemptively saving the e for when she uses an ability or the q to gap close if she flashes away for example 
right? But again, super oppressive. I can push minion waves really quick now as Fizz. And then we're going to just do this on repeat, okay? The way you impact the game and snowball it is not just by killing your laner over and over again, because Fizz really isn't like the best at taking down towers. You do it by, by roaming the map and keep removing other enemy champions from their lanes and putting them further behind because they can't farm minion gold, they can't farm kill gold, and your laners get an easier time, okay? So the, the formula is obviously Q, auto, W, and then E, in, or out. And then after you do that and you get ahead on your enemy mid laner, you start to take that uh, combo with your R to side lanes and do it in side lanes. So here we won't use the R on, on Ziggs here. We're just going to try and Q into him, auto W, and then E when we have to to either dodge a big ability or gap close and deal more kill damage. So here, E up. All right, we dodge that ability at the start and then we get the kill. We're going to push this wave out with our W's and autos and E's. And then we're going to roam to another lane with our R and show you guys again one last time pushing waves and getting kills off roams. Okay, so here we're going to just roam bot towards the scale. Even if she gets under tower, this could be a really good example here. If a Mubu doesn't get the kill, we just dive her under tower because the E drops aggro. So I'm just going to literally land the R at full range. Even if I don't land the R, it's fine. I'm just going to come behind her here, land the R, right? auto w and then here just to show you the tower aggro right you're about to take a shot you just e up and then you drop that tower aggro and you get out scot-free okay so that's pretty much it guys have some fun with fizz play him this very simple straightforward basic way and you should be able to snowball in a lot of your games and then like i said if you want to watch some full game commentaries where things get a bit hairier and a bit slipperier i invite you to check out some of the gameplay guides that we've posted on the channel as well until then i will catch you guys in the next one